It's time for another Triple M footy news update with Tom Brown. My name's Rudy Etzel. I've got Tom here in the studio. Uh, we've got uh, a lot to get through today. Big contract news out of Melbourne, uh, Christian Petrarca. Uh, the fallout of the uh, the tribunal hearings last night. Uh, a little story about Jamara Ugelhagen down the beach. And uh, also, uh, it couldn't be a Triple M footy news update without some Collingwood stuff. Tommy, how are you? Good morning, Rudy. Lots happening this morning. Gil McLaughlin is speaking at Marvel this morning. I think the AFL is announcing a million members across the clubs uh, this year. And uh, also, I want to discuss this Christian Petrarca story, which I broke on Seven News last night. I've got some additional information, which I want to talk to you guys about. All right. Well, let's start there, shall we? So, uh, seven years, I believe, is the deal, Tommy. So, Melbourne this morning will formally announce Christian Petrarca's deal, a seven-year extension on his existing contract, which expires at the end of 2022. It'll take him through to 2029. The new news on this, as I reported somewhat conservatively last night, Rudy, Mm -hmm. the deal was around 900,000 for seven years, which I think 6.3 odd million dollars. My information this morning from very well-placed sources is that when this deal starts at the end of 2022, i.e. 2023, this deal is seven years at over a million dollars a year on average. A million bucks each. So basically... What's that, more or less the Grundy deal? What do you like mean, that the Pendlebury, of... Grundy, uh, Dustin Martin territory? Yeah, right. Well, I mean, hard to argue he doesn't deserve it. He's it's, been it's one of the best players in the It's hard to argue he doesn't deserve it. And uh, it just shows, again, that seven-year contracts, which have been sort of scrutinized heavily recently, are back in vogue. Um, Robbie DeRazio, his manager, has obviously got the seven years and also the amount of money. Um, I think clubs are expecting the salary cap to go up next year, which should obviously help the fact that he's getting a million dollars. But it's a phenomenal vote of confidence in the future of the Melbourne Football Club. They've now signed up Oliver until the end of next year, but more long-term Max Gorn, Salem, also Jack Viney and Christian Petrarca. It's that theory that if you get the five or six big guns on board with big contracts, I guess then you can fill in sort of the roles if you like. So a lot of Melbourne's money clearly being directed to those five or six players. But as I've just said, I think that deal is over a million dollars a year. That's an absolute monster. He's, uh, it's fair to say he's worth it. I can see, uh, our colleague Ethan Meldrum out there is a massive Melbourne fan and he's, uh, fist pumping, uh, seven and oh, all things look pretty good, uh, at, uh, demon land at it's, the moment. Just on that, Rudy, it's big though for Collingwood. Uh, Collingwood, yep. I mentioned on this podcast last week, don't have a lot of salary space this year. They could chase a free agent if they really shuffled things around. They were targeting 2022. And in particular, I think they were targeting Petrarca, Petrarca, um, spoke on Fox recently about how he is mates basically with uh, Scott Pendlebury and also supported Collingwood growing up. I think Collingwood uh, were eyeing off Petrarca, no doubt. And at the moment, it's fair to say that Collingwood's not a destination club. They were struggling already to attract free agents. They didn't get Tom Lynch, obviously partly because of salary cap space. And now their form is not helping because a lot of these guys like Petrarca can now, they want buy-in with four or five mates where they might, might win, hopefully, or in Melbourne's case, they need one flag first, but hopefully yeah. they might win one, two, or three. So good luck to them. Yeah, good luck to them. It's a great deal for Melbourne. Like I said, I'd happily show out a million bucks for Christian Petrarca every day. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that uh, he's clearly a top five, a top ten player in the competition, and that's what they command. And uh, it's, it's a great deal for Melbourne, great deal for Christian, and well done by his manager, Robbie DeRazio. Indeed. Uh, now, there was a couple of uh, tribunal decisions last night. First of all... Uh, Paddy McCartan was uh, suspended for five games for his punch to the jaw of Aaron Black in the VFL. And Bailey Fritch actually got off his charge of, I think it was, I think it was called striking, wasn't it? He uh, elbowed. El- it was like a fend off. Yeah, he elbowed, um, he elbowed young, is it Tom Powell? Yep. Uh, from North and uh, was originally given a week. And then um, the, the they went to the tribunal, overturned. Uh, to no matches. He's been cleared effectively. Uh, so what do you make of these? We'll start with McCartan. He, so um, start he with put, McCartan. He's just received five weeks. There'll be some that think a king hit deserves more than five weeks. And I think that's a pretty strong argument. You can't go around king hitting people. He's just lucky. Um, it was the grace of God that uh, the, his opponent uh, from Geelong didn't suffer a broken jaw or, or worse or, or even concussion. Mm. So uh, he was lucky. Now McCartan raised this argument that he's type 1 diabetic. And he was low at the time. And I can speak from personal experience because I'm type 1 diabetic. And my wife, Tara, and I have this discussion. The only time I get antsy uh, or a bit aggro is when I'm low. And it's the worst feeling. So I'm not suggesting... Paddy wouldn't have made that story up. So I really feel for Paddy because when you are low, that's your blood sugar's falling, you definitely can get angry. Um, And the last thing you ever want to do is blame your diabetes for everything. So he's probably between a rock and a hard place going, I don't want to use it as an excuse. Um, I don't really want to bring it up but I was feeling shocking. I was feeling low. I had the shakes or whatever, and it it makes me aggro. And I think that could have been absolutely could have been a contributing factor. So good luck. Um, and well done for Patty for having been brave and speaking out against that, uh, about that. 
because I think it's really hard for type 1 diabetics. You have to manage that situation in all types of context. Is an excuse for belting someone? Absolutely not. And my point on that was that Paddy probably, and he's sort of fighting for his career, trying to get a list spot, which I think the Swans have still got one of. Um, but Paddy probably shouldn't be going out onto the field if his sugars are unstable or indeed low. So um, I, I think he's got a bit of a role to play in that, but good on him for speaking out a, a, about that. As for the Fritch decision, that's the second time recently the tribunal's out of step with the AFL on some of these head knock issues. Cunnington got off after a week, took it to the tribunal, and now Fritch has raised his elbow. He, I don't think he had to raise his elbow, and the tribunal hasn't been in step with the AFL's more recent approach on concussion. So I'm sure the AFL would be looking at that thinking, well, do we need to rewrite some rules there or make it more clear for the tribunal? It's very interesting in the context of this uh, concussion discussion this season. Yes, very interesting indeed. Uh, uh, yeah, and we'll be interesting to see how that is adjudicated uh, moving into the future. Um, you wanted to discuss Mitch McGovern, uh, yeah. eight to 10 week hamstring, I believe, Tom. Back, he's had these persistent back and hamstring issues. So everything with Mitch, um, no offense to Mitch, he's a great player and I love seeing him. I think he's really effective up forward. I think he's a, a an exciting player, but everything with Mitch seems to be long-term when he gets these persistent injuries. He's had a bad run of them. Now he's got this um, hamstring again, Carlton saying last night, eight to 10 weeks. So that's a blow for the Blues. As I said earlier, Tommy, we can't do one of these podcasts uh, without talking a bit of Collingwood. <laughs> uh, and the the new-ish news out of there is uh, about a big spray Uh Nathan Buckley gave the team at halftime of the Gold Coast game. Yes, Steve-O, Mark Stevens mentioned this story to me yesterday. I think he mentioned it on our news last night, and Tom Morris covered it as well on Fox. Um, apparently, Bucks' spray against the Suns at halftime was particularly vigorous. Is that news? No. Coaches have to pull all sorts of levers. But it is an interesting story, having said that, because uh, <laughs> apparently, according to, well, certainly Tom's report and what Steve-O told me, is that it was a particularly vigorous spray, even by coach standards. So uh, that was the uh, demands which he was placing on his players at halftime. And frankly, he was entitled to because it wasn't the world's best performance. That's been a discussion point at Collingwood this week, as has Jordan Dugowie. He's been copying it in terms of his, I guess, effort level in the middle. He was coming back from concussion. But when Lee Matthews talks, I listen. And he was particularly vigorous in his assessment on 3AW last night, in particular on the fact that Geordie, in Lee Matthews' opinion, should be playing up forward because he's not as good as Dustin Martin. And perhaps uh, Geordie has visions at times that he thinks he is. Anyway, this is what Lee Matthews said. I forget about thinking of Jordan to go as Dustin Martin. Yeah. He is not his bootlaces, right? Don't put him in the centre bounce, because all he does is hang around the middle of the ground. Mm. Let him play small full forward, because that is where he's been at his absolute best. Um, I think we might just leave that there, Tommy. What do you reckon? Or have you got one more? Just one more on Jamari Ugalhagen. A lot of, of discussion about Jamari Ugalhagen. I went on Friday Night Footy and said that he shouldn't be on social media, and I know a lot of people say that I shouldn't be on social media. <laughs> so it's fair enough. I'm trying to tweet yeah. less. I've made my Instagram <laughs> private off the back of that, Rudy. But uh, just a little anecdote. Jamara's a great kid. Does nothing wrong. Enthusiastic. Really well-natured. And I'm sure he'll be a champion player. There's a lot of discussion at the moment about why the Bulldogs aren't giving you a game. There was a funny anecdote that went around the Sorrento pub over the holidays, which is where I spent a week or so. Nathan Buckley was down there as well. And there was a story doing the rounds. And you never know if this is pub talk or I think it's factual. There's a story doing the rounds that uh, Jamara enthusiastically ran into Bucks. <laughs> said to Bucks, Bucks, can't wait to play you guys in round one. So, <laughs> And I think Bucks was like, well, fair enough, but <laughs> look forward to it. <laughs> look forward to it. But it was a, it just reflects his uh, enthusiastic attitude, Jamara. And I'm sure when he plays, he'll be a beauty. Oh, I can't wait to see him. Bevo's just making him earn it. Yeah, 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 and fair enough. And it's not like they're going badly, either, the dogs. So. And my point on his social media was, I'm sure you focus on footy, but just keep your private stuff private and then just concentrate uh, on the footy. No, he's, he's a young guy. Just let him have social media, Tommy. Come on. A bit out of step, you reckon? Oh, maybe a little. Maybe a little. Well, I think we will leave that there then. We're starting to talk social media. Maybe not our area of expertise. Uh, well, it's my area of expertise, Rudy. <laughs> Speak for yourself. This <laughs> afternoon, obviously, we'll have him, obviously, more from Gill, and there'll be some issues coming out of that press conference today. And uh, a big day of news, Rudy. I expect Christian Petrarca will speak as well today. Melbourne expected to confirm that landmark deal, which we had on the news last night, uh, I think around midday. Mm. As I said earlier, exciting times for the Demons, exciting times for the Triple M. Uh, stay tuned to uh, the Triple M listener podcast feed. We've got the midweek rub later and of course our suite of programs over the weekend. Another massive weekend of footy coming up. We'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, sorry. Friday, Friday. Tommy. She's ready. We'll see you soon.